Okay, everyone, let's get right into it. So for those of you that are completely new to this platform, MailChimp is an extremely powerful platform and all of its solutions and services are available over here. You can see right off the bat, it's not just an email marketing platform. You can build websites over here. You can do social media marketing. You can do content creation, reporting and analytics, but it's best known for its email marketing services. If we click this pricing option over here, MailChimp has all kinds of pricing plans for your specific needs. If you want to compare all of their plans, you can just scroll down on their pricing plan, press compare all features, and you can see right here, they have all of their different plans and exactly what they offer very clearly laid out. And you can even go ahead and actually divide the plan up by how many contacts you already have. If you have, for example, 100,000 contacts, and obviously it's going to be much, much more expensive. So just keep that in mind. Figure out a plan that makes sense for you. Well, once you have that understanding, you can go ahead and press the sign up or log into MailChimp. Now, once you've signed up, you'll be directed to this page over here, which is MailChimp's main dashboard. And we have all of our features and functionalities available to us. And the first and most important setting I want to talk about is this campaigns tab right here. You'll be spending a lot of time here because this is where a lot of the creation is done. So a campaign on MailChimp is basically the marketing messages you want to create and share with your audience. It's important to note that it's not just emails. You can create ads, sign up forms, landing pages, whatever you want through this tab. So if I press create here, for example, to just show you this, we can see that the most common and popular one is to create an email, which you can do right here. Or you can create, like I said, sign up forms, surveys, ads for your social media marketing and social posts. For this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to create emails but just know that the steps are pretty much the same. Once you figure out how to create one kind of campaign, the rest are pretty much the same. It's just customized for each channel. So I'll go ahead and call this test email for tutorial. So once we do that, we'll be directed over here where MailChimp tells us how do you want to design your email? So the really cool thing about MailChimp is that you can do it any way you want. You can use fully designed templates to save a lot of time. You can build it from scratch. You can even code it yourself or have basic layouts. So let's go ahead and take a look at the templates by selecting this option. And when we do that, we can see that these are all of the templates available. You can code your own. You can go ahead and filter them by the different categories. So let's say, for example, I just want to create a thank you email. I can go ahead and select that. Then you can go ahead and choose the different designs. If you want a minimalist design, for example, you can select that right here and the industry. So I'm going to go ahead and choose something very simple. Let's go ahead and choose this one right here. So you can go ahead and preview it on your mobile device and your desktop. And then if you like what you see, you can apply it. If you want to go back to all of the templates, just press exit preview. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and apply it for the sake of this tutorial. So let's say, for example, I want to make changes in terms of text or any other basic functionalities. All of that is available on your left right here. So you can add a heading by just dragging and dropping it wherever you want. So let's say I want to drag it over here. I can go ahead and write this is a test heading. You can even go ahead and move your blocks around. So if I want to put it over here, I can do that. I can go ahead and duplicate my block, delete it. It's very, very straightforward stuff. Now, once we have that understood, you can press the styles option over here. Now you can go ahead and tweak what the template looks like. So for example, if you want to change the background color altogether, you can do that over here and it's going to make changes to the entire template right here. Okay, so I can do the exact same thing for body color, make it red. I can go back over here, go back to my styles instead of email. Let's choose our text and change the entire text font. I can do this over here in styles. Now, when it comes to optimize, this is basically MailChimp looking at your email and telling you if there are any errors that you need to fix and they will appear here so that you can tweak them. So if you're happy with your email, you can press the send text option. You can go ahead and put in your email right here. And then right here, you have a bunch of different options available. So for example, it says allow send to the following user accounts. I can choose mine. And here it says include instruction, then a personal message. So here you can just go ahead and type a comment like, hey, is my email okay? What do you think about this? And then finally over here, who should be notified by email about new comments? You can just go ahead and say that anytime there's a comment on this email, I want to be notified about it. Now, you can even just go ahead and actually save and exit. So if you go ahead and press this option, you can save it as a template. So if you're happy with these changes, I can save this as a template that I can reuse in the future. Or if you want to change your template, you can change it right here by pressing change template. 
Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and press save and exit for now. And once we do that, we can see that right here, we have a bunch of different settings available to us. Firstly, on the right, we see what our email looks like. And then on the left, you can go ahead and choose the different settings, like who is going to receive your email, from what email they're going to be receiving this, what the subject line is, the send, and the content, which is this right here, is in the email. So for example, I can go ahead and add recipients. And there's multiple different ways you can choose who receives this email. You can import contacts, you can use contacts that are currently existing in MailChimp, and you can use a bunch of different things, but I'll talk about that in a second when we actually talk about contacts and how we can add them. And then over here, you can choose exactly by what email you want this email to be sent. Here you have your subject line, you can go ahead and choose. You can put a preview text, subject line, so that this is what people will see when they receive this email. Here you have your send time, exactly when do you want to send it. Do you want to send it right now? If you press this, the email will be sent right after you confirm it or you can schedule it based on whenever you want this to be sent. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and press finish later. Now, once we've gone through all of that process, we can see right here, we have our draft email created in our campaign, and we can make any tweaks to it in the future. Once we actually launch this email, and once it goes live, you'll be able to see some basic data about this email right here. So once we have that understood, now let's go to automations right here. Over here, this is a very powerful feature about MailChimp. And I want to specifically talk about this thing called all journeys. So when it comes to journeys, think of this as autopilot mode in a sense that you can create a bunch of if then statements and basically tell MailChimp, if my contact does this and this and this, then put them in this step and send them this email and send them that email, make them unsubscribe. It's all meant to be automated. Okay. So that's what journeys are for. So I'll show you how we can do this right here. Okay. So you can go ahead and create a customer journey. And when we do that, we'll be directed to this page over here, which says try these recommended journeys. So you have welcome new contacts. You have, for example, recover abandoned cards. So they have a whole bunch of different options available. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it very simple and choose welcome new contacts. So we can see right here, everyone that on the left, it's telling me this journey will send an introductory welcome email welcoming the user. And it's telling me exactly what the trigger is going to be. Anytime somebody signs up to, let's say, our website or something like that, then an email will be triggered and the journey will end. Now, obviously, everyone, this is a very, very, very basic journey. It gets way more complicated than this, and I'll show you that in a second. So let me just go ahead and actually approve all of this and press turn on and just press the continue option. So once I do that over here, we can see my journey is live right here, and I can go ahead and actually replicate it, pause it, or even just view the journey. So I'm going to go ahead and view it right now together with you, and then I'll show you how you can make changes to it. So this is our current journey. Contact signs up to Metamedia, sends an email right here. Very straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and actually pause and edit this. So let's pause it. Anytime you want to make changes to a journey that's live, you have to pause it and then make changes accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead and say that, okay, contact signs up to Metamedia. Then I'll add a journey point over here. I can say something like, hey, first things first is when they sign up, I want to have a delay for about one day. Okay, I don't want to just send them an email right away. I want to chill for a day and then send them an email. So this will add a time delay. After that, I can add another journey point and say, okay, let's now do a if else statement. Okay, so I can basically split my journey into two things and I can split it based on decisions. If a customer does this, then send them this way. If a customer does that, then send them that way. Let's just say that, you know, if it's a customer's birthday, I'm just using a random, random example. And you can go ahead and say birthday month is May. Then you press use segment over here. So now we're basically saying that once they sign up, wait a day. If it's their birthday, then it could be like, hey, send them like a happy birthday. If it's not their birthday, then send them something else like another email. So this isn't the best example in terms of exactly what you would use, but you're getting the idea over here. You can go ahead and make it as powerful as you want, depending on how you want to create it. Okay, so that's how you can go ahead and do this right here. And you can go ahead and make all kinds of journey points. Okay, so if I add another journey point over here, for example, you can go ahead and do it by percentage split. So if you want to split test a particular email, you can do that over here and you can create a 50-50 split and you can add two different mails right here and it will basically send 50% of the audience to the left side and 50% to the right side. So once we have journeys understood, we can go back over here. And the next thing I want to talk to you about is this audience tab right here. So let's go ahead and click that. So once we do that, we'll be directed to this page over here, which is your main audience dashboard. 
Now over here, you can go ahead and create contacts. All right. So you have to have contacts to send emails to for this to actually work. There's multiple different ways, like I talked about in the beginning of this tutorial, for you to create your contact. You can add your contacts manually by importing them to MailChimp. You can, for example, upload a file. You can just copy paste them or directly via emails. Once you have these contacts uploaded onto MailChimp, they will appear in your particular audience. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and press the back button over here. And then over here, another thing I wanted to talk to you about is this sign up forms option. You can even go ahead and create sign up forms. These are basically landing pages that you can go ahead and create. And once you create them, you can go ahead and send them out to your customers. They can fill them out. Once they fill this information out, they will become a contact on MailChimp. I'll just show you very quickly. I can call this test landing page and I can keep it, you know, at the current audience, press begin. And then over here, I can go ahead and choose exactly what my landing page should be. Let me just go with lead generation for now. I accept. And then over here, we can see that this is what the landing page will look like. You can make a bunch of changes using the blocks over here, exactly the same as the email builder. And then over here, people can enter their email and then they will be subscribed and sent to MailChimp. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press the save option over here. I'm happy with it. And then over here, we've basically now created our sign up form and all of the different tweaks in terms of what the URL should be, exactly what the page title and site icon, all of that stuff in terms of making it look more like your brand, you can change over here. Once you're happy with everything, you can press the publish option. So that's what sign up forms are. Then finally, a couple of the things I want to talk about before we move to analytics is this segments and tags option. So let me go ahead and talk about segments first. So the way that segment works is once you have an audience created or contacts imported, you can divide them up, right? You can divide them up based on categories, based on certain settings, and you can basically create segments for them. Let's say, for example, you want to go ahead and filter people by a particular birthday. You can do that and say that everybody that has a birthday in May, I want to create a new segment for that particular audience so that I can use them in the future. And I'll just call this May contacts birthday. I'll just make it very simple. Save and exit. And now I've created a segment. And anybody that's a contact now that's born in May, once they get imported into my MailChimp, they will basically be segmented into this criteria if they're born in May. Okay, so that's what segments are. Again, you can make this way, way, way more complicated. Finally, over here, you have tags. Tags are another great way to basically segment your audience. If you have people that have made purchases from you, you can call them product purchasers. If people are not engaging with your website, you can call them unsubscribed or uninterested. Whatever you want to do, you can create a new tag over here. Call it for, for example, purchasers. As an example, press create. And now I've created this tag. And basically, once I have my audience or contacts created, I can assign people tags very easily. So it gives it a very clean way to manage my contacts. Finally, guys, the last thing I want to talk about over here is this analytics tab. Over here, once you have your email sent, once you have your journey sent, all of your information will be available here. This is where you will be spending a lot of your time reporting, figuring out things are working well or not. And you can see total sends, open rate, click rates, and all kinds of different metrics are available to you here. Okay, so that's why MailChimp is very powerful. We can see it's a very detailed view. And over here on our left for the analytics, you can go ahead and create audience report and figure out exactly who subscribe, not subscribe. And you can even go ahead and make reports right here and see based on different kinds of criteria in terms of emails, SMSs, landing pages, all of these different settings and stats will have their own reports. You can even create your own report. So that's pretty much MailChimp in a nutshell. There's a lot more to talk about, obviously, because it's a very powerful platform. But once you understand campaigns, journeys, reportings, and how to build emails in general, everything else is pretty much the same. It just follows similar steps. So that being said, everybody, if you enjoyed this content, then go ahead and press the like button and share it with your friends. And if you're interested in more content like this, then consider subscribing to the channel. I make all kinds of free educational videos, and I would appreciate your support. On that note, everybody, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.